So, uh, let me uh, recall a little uh, what we have done in the last discussion. Uh, we have uh, talked about uh, a symmetric gauge and uh, uh, talked about the nature of the uh, wave functions, the Landau levels and um, the properties of the Landau levels were written down in the symmetric gauge uh, that is having circular symmetry and we have also discussed that um, you know the energy is of course a conserved quantity and uh, at the same time uh, because of this symmetric gauge the angular momentum is a, a conserved quantity as well and the corresponding uh, quantum number which uh, is that for Jz say for example is m and m denotes the degeneracy of the Landau levels ok. And um, then we had written down uh, the form of the Landau levels and um, we are in principle uh, interested with the lowest Landau level. Uh, in some situations we may have to go to higher Landau levels, but uh, something that we are not going to discuss here. Okay, so, uh, let me show you this uh, plot once again which uh, we had shown earlier. The left in this slide represents the integer quantum Hall effect which uh, is all known to us and uh, on the right we have these the Hall effect corresponding to the fractionally quantized plateaus as you can see uh, there are uh, all these uh, plateaus that are you know that exist which uh, are like 4 by 7, like 3 by 4 and um, 3 by 7 and so on and uh, these are not very clear I apologize for that, but one can uh, really look at uh, clean pictures of that which I had shown you earlier and um, so the challenge was to understand how these Landau levels are partially filled. Of course, it cannot happen that the electrons are uh, fractionally uh, they carry fractional charges that is out of question because we know that uh, electronic charge is a uh, fundamental uh, property of the electron. So, it is not that the electronic charge gets uh, it is divisible by a factor of 3 or a factor of 5 and so on. So, there must be something else happening which is giving rise to the fractionally quantized plateaus. Okay. So, these are uh, quite difficult to understand and uh, people have understood uh, that uh, you know because of the, uh, the flatness of the Landau levels and the enormous degeneracy that uh, comes along with uh, each of the Landau levels is extraordinarily large uh, degenerate states and because of that degeneracy as well as the flatness of the Landau level the interaction effects are inevitable which cannot be neglected in this particular case and how invoking interaction terms uh, takes care of these uh, fractionally quantized plateaus is something that we want to understand in this uh, discussion. Okay. And um, a large number of uh, or rather a lot of work has been done by this uh, person called uh, Bob Laughlin, uh, Robert Laughlin and uh, uh, you can actually see the first paper which was published in 1983. In physical review letters it says anomalous quantum Hall effect and incompressible quantum fluid with fractionally charged excitations. Okay. So, let me uh, just go back to the wave function in the symmetric gauge uh, for a moment and this is something that we have done it in some form last uh, discussion. So, uh, there is a z to the power m factor and then there is a and the Gaussian uh, which is a mod z square divided by 4 l b square. Uh, where L b is the magnetic length which is uh, E b over h cross over E b and so on. And uh, so, this is the unnormalized wave function and if you normalize it then of course, uh, you get all these factors. And uh, uh, so, this is taken from this uh, Ronnie Thommel and uh, his co-workers in FISREV X uh, in 2015. These are the Landau levels that are shown. So, it is half h cross omega, 3 half h cross omega, 5 half h cross omega and so on. And uh, these are the circular Landau level corresponding to m equal to 0, m equal to 1, m equal to 2 and 3 and so on. So, each uh, of these Landau levels are characterized by the length which are given by the mod of z, uh, where uh, z is a complex number where z1 and z2 one can see it here that uh, so z is ac actually equal to z1 minus z2 and z1 and z2 are uh, the coordinates the complex coordinates of two uh, such particles uh, with respect to certain 
origin choose an origin and z is equal to z1 minus z2 and it has a radius which is given by uh, 2m lb root over 2m into lb okay so um, all these uh, fractions uh, that we are talking about are difficult to understand and uh, why is this problem uh, very difficult why is this problem uh, sort of not uh, been understood right at the beginning or uh, it was almost like at the uh, just after the integer quantum hall effect was discovered by von Klitzing and co-workers this was just in about couple of years or uh, two three years later uh, Laughlin wrote these papers where uh, fractionally quantized uh, excitations or um, plateaus at these uh, fractional values are being seen. So, uh, how is this uh, the plateaus are coming at these uh, values the fractional values ok. So, uh, what I said was let me reiterate once again one is the uh, flatness of the Landau levels. which we know that they are very flat and uh, when we say flatness we say that the kinetic energy is 0 of the electrons uh, 0 means it is small because there is no dispersion and uh, the kinetic energy actually goes as del E del K. So, if this uh, ease the energy levels have no K dependence which we have seen that they do not have a K dependence then the velocities are frozen that is they, these electrons are frozen and uh, that is the only energy scale that is remaining in the problem are the interaction energies or the potential energy. So, this is why uh, let me write kinetic energy is 0. So, potential energy is uh, most uh, important I mean it is supremely important rather. And of course, that the degeneracy is very high. And when we say it is very high it is uh, practically infinity and uh, it is uh, it is only limited by the you know the area of the sample which uh, uh, can become large and and the magnetic field the strength of the magnetic field which uh, is uh, which is also in this particular case it is very large ok. So, what happens is uh, that uh, that there are these uh, Landau levels. So, these are these Landau levels and uh, so these are just the equidistant Landau levels we have gotten back to our discussion on the 2D electron gas where things are simpler and uh, we have spent uh, most of the time there. And these are say for example, say half h cross omega uh, 3 half h cross omega which is just what I showed a while back 5 by 2 h cross omega and so on and so forth ok. Now, these uh, levels are we know that they are broadened uh, because of the presence of disorder and also now they are broadened uh, because of the presence of interactions ok. So, let me show you one Landau level which is broadened ok. And uh, say for example, right now we uh, talk about a hierarchy of energy scales which are uh, given by that the Landau level energies or the you know this uh, spacing between the Landau levels which is known as h cross omega b. So, it is h cross omega b and is much greater than let us call it as E c uh, which uh, the c refers to coulomb interaction between the electrons and this is much greater than the disorder ok which we have seen earlier. In fact, we were mostly talking about uh, the broadening of the Landau levels uh, induced by the disorder. And now, since the Coulomb interaction plays a central role, uh, then uh, let us consider that the disorder uh, induced broadening is small and the broadening is mostly coming from the Coulomb interactions ok. So, there is a Coulomb interaction between uh, the particles and we will we'll talk about that. So, this broadening uh, is not due to disorder at this moment and it is due to the Coulomb interaction broadening also contributes to it, but let us say it is not much ok. And there is one more important thing is that the magnetic uh, energy or the Landau level this thing the formation of the Landau levels is uh, still so large that is the distance between the two Landau levels or the difference between the two Landau levels is still very large 
and uh, such that uh, there is no <laughs> you know merging a uh, merger of the Landau levels do not happen. So, they do not start overlapping with, with each other even when interaction and disorder are present. Okay? Now, what happens is that because of the interaction let us say that this causes opening of a gap in the spectrum okay? and this opening of the gap this gap that we are talking about uh, say here this gap is of the order of say E c let us call it as uh, whatever I mean this gap is uh, because it is proportional uh, or it is due to the Coulomb interaction let us call this as uh, a delta E c. Okay? Uh, so, it, it creates a gap let me denote it by a color this color ok. So, this is ordinary quantum mechanics the perturbation theory that we have talked about. Suppose this Coulomb interaction is not very large and it can be treated as a perturbation. So, this perturbation is going to lift degeneracies. We know that uh, in Stark effect and Zeeman effect and other you know situations in which we have applied a perturbation and that perturbation has created opening up of a gap in the degenerate state. Say for example, the hydrogen atom L equal to 2 and this L equal to 2 is uh, say for example, even if we uh, you know. So, it is a 4 fold degenerate if we ignore uh, the spin of the electrons. If we include the spin then it becomes you know 8 fold degenerate. So, it is uh, you know n square fold degenerate and so on. So, all these uh, um, L equal to 2 will have all these levels which are uh, you know they are degenerate 4 of them. And now, if you apply a weak electric field or a weak magnetic field, it is there is a possibility that uh, either all the four levels will get split, or maybe some of them get split and some of them retain uh, their uh, original, you know, values, or they do not get split because of some selection rules that uh, is there governing the problem. Let's uh, leave that for the moment. We are only talking about lifting of the degeneracy, and this degeneracy is lifted here. Now, um, let me assume that the Fermi energy now for a given value of the field Fermi energy is here okay? and which means a Landau level is not completely filled, but it is partially filled say it is filled one third. Okay? So, it is just the way you know I have tried to show that it is one third filled and uh, so uh, you will see that there is a plateau coming uh, at that value of one third and that is why there are fractionally quantized plateaus in the Hall resistivity or in the Hall conductivity. So, this is the position the red is the position of the Fermi level and the Fermi level is now in the gap and when it is in the gap uh, there will be a sort of you know plateau in the say the conductivity and uh, as the magnetic field increases. Uh, these red line will rise and uh, then you know it will suppose similar physics takes place here at say say for example, this two fifth filling okay? and uh, let me show it again this by this green hatched lines. So, this, there is a gap that has been created uh, because of this interaction term lifting up the degeneracy and then the magnetic field when it is tuned it, it reaches this this gap. Okay? And when it reaches this gap uh, again you will see a plateau in the, uh, in the conductivity and so on. Alternatively when uh, there is uh, it gets levels to conduct uh, you will get a resistivity which uh, is goes you know flat and then whenever it does not get uh, the levels to conduct then the resistivity will have a plateau and that is how you know the plateaus that arises in the uh, this conductivity or the resistivity plots at the fractionally quantized value and there are other fractions as you can understand and let us only stick to the or rather restrict ourselves to the uh, lowest Landau level. Uh, the physics of the higher Landau levels are more uh, difficult. So, we will not you know go into that and in fact, uh, some of the uh, fractions which are improper fractions actually come from the uh, higher Landau level. Okay. Now, if you have to solve this problem of uh, this degenerate perturbation theory which is usually taught in the undergraduate uh, classes of uh, quantum mechanics probably a quantum mechanics 2 uh, where uh, approximate methods of dealing with systems uh, are being taught. 
and um, one can of course do a perturbation theory, but uh, one has to understand that uh, this is uh, an infinitely large uh, degenerate uh, case. Okay, it's not like two-fold or three-fold or four-fold degeneracy that is there. There is a very large degeneracy. So, doing a calculation on on these uh, even a perturbation theory, which means that we are still considering the Coulomb interaction to be uh, not so large, so that we can talk about perturbation theory, even that becomes extremely difficult. And uh, if uh, that needs to be done, it can be done probably uh, 10 to 12 to 15 number of uh, electrons or particles uh, numerically, but anything more than that becomes very difficult. So, uh, Laughlin uh, came in, Robert Laughlin came into this uh, problem and then instead of solving this enormously degenerate problem, he just wrote down an answer to the problem. Okay? That is precisely what he did, he, he sort of uh, without uh, solving uh, intuitively he uh, wrote down the result of this and which are called as a Laughlin states uh, which we will just, just be writing. And this Laughlin states uh, are um, having a, an exponent which corresponds to the uh, angular momentum quantum number and for the Laughlin states um, the filling fraction is like uh, 1 over m and um, these m is actually an odd uh, integer and if they are even integer they of course do not correspond to the quantum Hall effect that we are discussing. But maybe for the case of bosonic quantum Hall effect one can uh, talk about m to be an even integer. So, uh, let me uh, sort of try to understand this a uh, little more clearly. So, each Landau level, each uh, Landau level can accommodate how many? So, n which is equal to a into b divided by phi 0 number of electrons. This you have seen earlier, okay, where a is the area of the sample, b is the external magnetic field and uh, phi 0 is the quantum of flux which is equal to h over e. And now, say you are talking about the uh, filling fraction n. Well, let us write it by nu. So, uh, we ask this question uh, that what are the number of ways to uh, fill up uh, nu n of these states. Okay. This is given by uh, n c nu n. Okay. And uh, if you expand this, uh, this is like a 1 over nu to the power nu n and 1 divided by 1 minus nu, 1 minus nu to the power n and this is a ridiculously large uh, number. Okay. These combinations that uh, uh, the number of ways actually to fill this uh, nu n of the states which means nu is a fraction say if it is uh, one third. Uh, then uh, what is the way that you have uh, these n electrons uh, and uh, you are uh, going to fill up these uh, available uh, I mean a particular Landau level by uh, these states and um, so on. So, a Coulomb interaction how do we write a Coulomb interaction? We have seen this earlier that uh, let us write it as a Vc, uh, C f stands for Coulomb, it is a uh, 2 particle, it depends on 2 coordinates of these 2 electrons and this is nothing but equal to E square by Ri minus Rj and uh, you see there is a positive sign which means that the electrons are e repulsive in nature and that is why. So, it, it does not depend upon the individual Ri and Rj. A, rather it depends upon the R i minus R j and the magnitude of that basically that in, is in the denominator. So, this will uh, of course, lift the degeneracy of these uh, 
enormously degenerate uh, problem that you see. Uh, then the spectrum will have gaps which is what we just showed and these um, the Fermi energy will lie in the gap and then one hal will have uh, this fractionally quantized plateaus coming into the picture. Okay. So, this is the by and large the problem and why the problem is uh, difficult and important to solve. Uh, so, uh, let us just write the Laughlin states. So, as I said that Laughlin simply by intuition he wrote down a state and uh, these uh, states uh, are they, they can be shown to have uh, the correct symmetries of the problem and um, they are they are so successful that uh, you know if you are able to do a calculation for a few electrons uh, say a dozen of electrons or 15 electrons say uh, for example and then you uh, use the Laughlin states uh, the variational states that Laughlin wrote down and um, then uh, the overlap of energy with this exact energy with the energy obtained from the Laughlin states are more than uh, 99 percent which means that these states are so accurate uh, that they uh, predict the values uh, value of the energy of these uh, strongly interacting problem quite uh, you know uh, well I mean extremely well rather ok. So, he uh, sort of uh, had a variational approach and then he wrote down the wave function and these uh, the Laughlin wave function are uh, they correspond to uh, you know uh, a filling fraction. A nu equal to 1 over m ok, where m is an odd integer and you might uh, wonder I mean this m has got nothing to do with the mass, m is rather the quantum number corresponding to the jz uh, or the z component of the angular momentum which is uh, what we have seen ok. Let us uh, you know um, see it for just two particles and see uh, what could be the form of the Laughlin states. And uh, once when we uh, gather enough intuition from this two particle problem, then we can extend it to many particle states. It is actually a problem of uh, many electron problem. Uh, so, it, these two particles, so it is a two particle state or two particle problem. And uh, any two particles, you know, charged particles, they would interact via the Coulomb term. And this Coulomb term, as we have seen, that they uh, depend upon uh, R i minus R j, where i and j are the uh, coordinates of these two particles. Uh, such a problem we have seen in uh, this is called a central force problem. Okay, we have seen in classical mechanics, um, which is uh, you know in the context of this, uh, there are these. Uh, uh, the gravitation the earth's uh, you know uh, earth is um, interacting with another planet by this similar potential and then one can find out the trajectory of uh, these uh, planets and uh, they are uh, depending on these energies and other things. Now, there are two things that are conserved in this central force problem uh, one is the energy and the other is the angular momentum and um, in quantum mechanics it becomes even more direct that uh, these uh, uh, central force problem the paradigmatic model is uh, say the hydrogen atom where uh, it has uh, you know one uh, uh, proton at the at the nucleus and there is an electron that goes around and this also has. So, the V is like uh, minus E square over R where R is the distance between the uh, or, or you can write it as R i minus R j. Uh, with respect to certain origin and usually nucleus is taken as the origin. So, one can write it as r where r is the, uh, the radius of the atom ok. Now, this uh, problem was uh, nicely solved using the eigenstates or the eigenfunctions of the angular momentum operator. Of course, the energy is conserved we know that 
the energy is given by minus 13.6 by n square electron volt. These are of course bound state energies because this is a bound state problem. There is a negative sign in front of the Coulomb term there because uh, there is a positive and a negative uh, charge uh, which are interacting that is a proton and an electron. And of course, in this particular case of quantum Hall effect, uh, this is, is going to be a repulsive potential. In any case, the general principle says that we have this uh, things are like uh, your uh, uh, the eigenfunctions are written in terms of the angular momentum. Okay? And um, so, we will uh, pick up that same information and one can write down this uh, these angular momentum states or uh, the wave functions uh, I mean uh, the angular momentum being a good quantum number. Uh, we write down the angular momentum as uh, Jz which is z component of the angular momentum and uh, this is uh, written as some z to the power m and e to the power minus uh, z square by 4 lb square and this is something that we have uh, discussed earlier that these Landau levels uh, with um, in the symmetric gauge will have a wave function which, uh, which goes as that and this is what we have shown you in this picture. It is uh, just a cartoon picture, but it nicely tells you that uh, now the Landau level wave functions are distributed in a circular pattern and uh, uh, these uh, m are the angular momentum quantum number which comes and um, there is no uh, great need to uh, normalize these wave functions and even the unnormalized wave functions uh, carry enough information for our purpose. Okay, so, this is the wave function that is relevant for us. Uh, so, this is a generic wave function for two particle problem which are the central potential that is Coulomb potential. Coulomb is a, an example of the central potential and we write down the wave function with m as a good quantum number. Uh, z is of course, uh, is a complex coordinates which is equal to x minus i y. Now, this is important usually z is written as x plus i y and z star is x minus i y. We made an exception to that uh, which is what we have said and these states are as I just showed that they are localized on a radius on a ring of radius r which is given by uh, root over 2 m and uh, l b where l b is the magnetic length that we have talked about several times. Okay? m is the angular momentum. All right. So, this is the, the two particle problem and um, if we write down the Jz term, the angular momentum which is uh, i h cross and then the r cross p uh, and the z component and you can write r as uh, you know x y z having all these components and p having components as uh, p x p y and p z and if we expand that this becomes equal to i h cross. Uh, x del del y minus y del del x okay? where p is written as minus i h cross del and uh, this in our notation which we have done earlier it is z uh, delta minus z tilde delta tilde. Okay? So, this is uh, if you look at the uh, discussion the one that we had before that is in the last uh, class you will see this and then z acting on these uh, states psi m. I am writing it with a ket which we have not written, but you can write it here. I mean this is a ket, uh, this is unnormalized of course and uh, this is equal to m h cross uh, psi m and so on. You, you can drop h cross if you like, but of course, um, uh, it is important to keep the scale. So, this is the solution for the problem quantum problem in 2D uh, or rather a two particle problem and um, this uh, because in this problem that is uh, particles two particles in a central potential has this advantage of writing down in terms of the relative coordinates and the center of mass coordinates. Uh, this psi can also be written as again the unnormalized thing 
is uh, z1 plus z2 whole to the power m and a z1 minus z2 whole to the power m and a exponential minus z1 square plus a z2 square um, and divided by 4 l b square and so on ok. So, uh, this is the total coordinate uh, z1 plus z2. So, z1 and z2 individually are the coordinates of the two particles. Okay, so they are like x1 minus i y1 and z2 is equal to x2 minus i y2. Okay, and along with m is the total angular momentum of the two particles, system of two particles, total angular momentum, and um, m is the relative angular momentum that is j1 minus j2 mod of that. Okay. They are of course, positive integers, uh, they are first of all they are integers and then they are not negative. So, this is uh, we have uh, significantly reduced the complexity of the problem. The problem is about a many particle interaction, we still have not done a many particle system, but we will still do that. But even the two particle problem, the exact solution becomes very difficult. We have been able to write down an unnormalized wave function even without solving the Schrodinger equation, it is just from our experience that we have written it down. Okay? So, if one of them goes as z to the power m, uh, small m exponential minus mod z square by 4 l b square, then two of them we simply use the, the relative coordinate and the center of mass coordinate, I mean the, the, the center of mass coordinate and this uh, the relative coordinate and so on and then write it down uh, the wave function, which we believe that they would be the solution of the Schrodinger equation if it is exactly solved. Okay? So, now many particle problem. So, after we do the two particle, the many particle problem. The question is that without an explicit calculation of all these uh, things because in many particle problem you understand that the interaction is going to be enormously complicated. It is still two body interaction, but each particle will interact with each every other particle. So, there will be so many pairs that are going to form and uh, you know, one has to solve a Schrodinger equation for those many pairs and uh, this will be a task that cannot be achieved unless you, you know numerically one can restrict to a few particles and then do this problem. Okay? So, uh, in the many particle problem on these such general grounds, so the psi which is now a function of not only z1, z2, but it is some uh, n particles again z1 and z2 they correspond to z1, z2, z3 they correspond to the uh, the complex coordinates of all these particles and um, this can be written as some f z1, uh, z2 and so on till z n. Um, so, for n particles and this is like exponential minus and then there is a, a summation it is i equal to 1 to n and it is uh, like a z i square. Uh, divided by 4 l b square. So, you will have in the exponent you will have a sum of these uh, z 1 square plus z 2 square plus z 3 square all the way up till z n square and um, where we had this z 1 plus z 2 to the power capital M and z 1 minus z 2 to the power small m, we have a function of all these coordinates which um, has to solve uh, or rather which has to take care of a few things, one of them being the Pauli exclusion principle. That is uh, the z1 and z2 uh, if they are same then this uh, 
this factor will have to go to 0 which means that if there are two particles at the same uh, this complex plane coordinate then of course, it has to go to 0. And so, this is one of the most important constraint that it has to satisfy and then of course, it has to also satisfy a related constraint the which is says that uh, the wave function becomes anti-symmetric when uh, two of the coordinates z1 and z2 are you know swapped. Okay. So, they are they are exchanged and these two have to be satisfied. So, this f should actually take into account uh, those properties. This is anyway a Gaussian that is going to be there for any harmonic oscillator problem. Remember that we are still solving a problem of harmonic oscillator. In the symmetric gauge, it becomes a harmonic oscillator and that is how the energy had become n plus of h cross omega. It is just that in the, the symmetric gauge, uh, because kx and ky both are not uh, you know conserved quantities. So, their corresponding quantum numbers are not there uh, which are constants of motion or, or they can be you know used in order to find out the degeneracy. But luckily, there is a solution to the problem uh, because of the symmetric nature of the states and uh, the gauge that we have used. We were able to find out a quantity that remains conserved and that quantity is nothing but uh, the angular momentum quantum number. And when we came to the same problem trying to revisit it from an interaction perspective that is uh, the interactions cannot be ignored. Uh, then uh, we find out that again uh, for a central potential or a coulomb potential problem, uh, we still have uh, this angular momentum to be uh, good quantum numbers or conserved quantities and we will have to exploit the corresponding quantum number in while writing down the wave function in that basis. Okay. So, this is what we have done and uh, uh, so, f uh, of z uh, let us call it a z i is uh, some analytic function. Um, it means that it is sort of uh, well behaved function everywhere uh, for all coordinates z1, z2 and so on. And um, uh, as I said that, so this is 1, uh, 2 is that uh, f uh, z i should uh, uh, acquire a sign that is a negative sign uh, if z1 i is swapped to z j. Uh, but two such swaps will again get back a sign. And of course, 3 is that uh, f z i should confirm to the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay. And um, so, one can write down the psi of you know z i is I mean it, it can be uh, using a factor it is called as a Jastro factor as a z 1 z i minus z j whole to the power m exponential minus i equal to 1 to say n and uh, exponential I mean this is z i mod square by 4 l b square. Okay. So, this is uh, very clear you see how does this um, conform to all the conditions that are written above. Uh, it is of course, some analytic function it is just a function of these uh, two coordinates uh, that are there i and j pair wise and uh, small m is the angular momentum quantum number which is the quantum number corresponding to j z. And um, you see if m is an odd integer then of course, um, 2 is obeyed right because uh, if you change uh, i and j you pick up a negative sign only when m is odd. Uh, and that is why uh, we said that this m has to be an odd integer and uh, the filling fraction would correspond to 1 over m that uh, is another thing that we will show in a moment. And uh, this m uh, remember that in the Laughlin states m is actually an odd 
integer okay and um, y uh, is 3 obeyed uh, 3 obeyed because if uh, i is equal to j um, then uh, these uh, quantity is actually 0 m times okay uh, so uh, this uh, really says that the exclusion principle is really enforced m times because it's it's not only just a zero but it's a zero and because of the product it's a, a you know zero m m orders of zero that are there okay now it remains to be seen that uh, these uh, wave function looks nice i mean in fact this is the thing that let me uh, do a bit of bordering for you such that you you know this is so this is called as a laughlin wave function or the Laughlin states. Okay. Uh, let us see how this has the right filling fraction. Of course, it conforms to the, the symmetric conditions just at what we had talked about that is uh, the exclusion principle and the, uh, the anti-symmetric wave function etc are being uh, followed. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, take how do Laughlin states yield the correct filling fraction. I mean fraction is of course because we know it is fraction, but uh, it is in general important to understand how in addition to all the symmetries that it preserves uh, that are essential, it also gives you a 1 over m you know kind of feeling that we are uh, looking forward to. Uh, so, uh, in order to do that uh, let us just uh, focus on say electron 1 and what I mean by electron 1 is that uh, whose coordinate is z 1. Okay. Now, in the amplitude or rather the, uh, the coefficient that you saw that is f of z. So, what is this standing of z1? Of course, z1 uh, there is a product. So, these uh, the f of z that you saw this contains of so say for z1 it contains a z1 minus z2, uh, z1 minus z3, uh, z1 minus z4 and so on all the way up to z1 minus zn. So, if we just write down this product or the, this coefficient product uh, for a particular value of z which is say z1 here. Uh, so, that corresponds to electron number 1. So, we are talking about just one electron or a single uh, electron this thing. So, uh, this f of uh, z1 uh, really looks like a product of uh, i less than j and then a z i minus z j whole to the power m right because now we are just talking about all of them which are these products and just that i is not equal to j and this is equal to uh, if you write it clearly then it becomes for this z i equal to z 1. So, this becomes that. So, it is 2 to n and a z 1 minus z i whole to the power m. Okay. So, this tells us that uh, there are of course, uh, at z i equal to uh, z 1 uh, there is of course, a 0. So, it, it tells you that there are. So, how many powers of z 1 we have in this particular case? We have. Um, so, it is like m powers of z 1 okay. and uh, this is like a n minus 1 powers of z 1 there. Okay. And that must be clear because there is a factor of m there. So, uh, this is a power is m and of course, there are such terms these many terms which are n minus 1 terms which are all written in the top. So, there are these m into n minus 1 powers of z 1 uh, which corresponds to a single particle whose coordinate we have taken as z 1. So, if that is true, uh, then the uh, the maximum angular momentum uh, that is uh, 
of course, the z component of the angular momentum as you know that it goes from uh, you know or rather this uh, total angular momentum uh, not the z component. I mean if the z component for a given j say j equal to 2 the j z takes values which are minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 ok. So, uh, these uh, maximum angular momentum that is um, uh, maximum value of j z in this particular case uh, is for this single problem is equal to you know m into n minus 1 because that is the power and that power is nothing but the angular momentum that appears in the wave function. So, you just read off the power. Um, and then you get the angular momentum. So, this is the maximum value of jz is equal to this and uh, the maximum uh, sort of extent of the wave function is equal to is given by say r which is equal to root over uh, 2m. Uh, n minus 1 uh, and the L b, L b is out, outside this, uh, this square root and you can just write it because n is so large it does not matter whether you write. Uh, so, it is a 2 m n L b ok. So, that is the maximum uh, because we have shown that this uh, extent of the wave function that is the radius of the wave function uh, of the circular uh, wave function that we get in the symmetric gauge has uh, these uh, 2 m into L b, but this is uh, because of this uh, thing the maximum uh, is given by this uh, 2 m uh, into n into uh, L b where n is the total number of electrons that are present. All right, so uh, if that is true uh, the area of this uh, wave function area Uh, states or the eigenfunctions is uh, given by pi r square which is equal to you know. So, it is like uh, it is pi into 2 m n L b square pi into 2 m n L b square ok. So, that is the area that you have and um, so the number of states in a particular Landau level that is uh, the total number of states Landau level is uh, given by is equal to a b over phi 0 it is a known result that we have done several times. And uh, this is nothing but this is equal to a it is equal to 2 pi uh, l b square using the definition of l b and this is nothing but uh, m into n ok. So, uh, just this simple argument gives that these uh, Laughlin states that we have just talked about they have these uh, the, the filling fraction Uh, is given by uh, nu equal to 1 over m ok. So, this is basically the number of states in a particular Landau level if it is m n and uh, then the filling fraction would be just this uh, 1 over n divided by m n which is 1 over m and this is exactly what we wanted. And uh, what else that is m is an odd integer. Okay, which means we get these Laughlin states correspond to say 1 over 3, 2 over 5, 1 over 5, 3 over 7, uh, 4 over 9 and so on and so forth. Okay. Any um, sort of digression from this suppose you want to have a, a fraction which is in improper fraction or with even denominator. Okay. So, there are fractions with even denominator such as um, say 1 over 6 or something or you know other fractions that are seen 
uh, they cannot be uh, of course explained by this um, simple uh, you know wave function the Laughlin states that we have written down. Uh, just uh, let me go back to the beginning and just uh, give a one minute overview of things. So, the problem is complicated because of the fact that there are uh, interactions coulomb interactions many particle interactions uh, which are taking place here. Uh, there is no other way for us to explain this fractionally quantized plateaus uh, otherwise we have to invoke uh, the interaction energy. Uh, the kinetic energy is 0 because of the Landau levels are flat which gives you a frozen kind of charge carriers, but we still uh, see that there are these plateaus that are there. And we uh, talk about a, a sort of particular hierarchy of energy levels which says that the magnetic energy is largest then it is coulomb energy and then it is disorder which means that uh, which samples would show fractional quantum Hall effect and which ones will show integer quantum Hall effect. Uh, the integer quantum Hall effect will be shown by samples where disorder is larger than coulomb interaction which means heavily disordered samples. Whereas, if you make these samples to be clean and uh, cleaner and cleaner they would start showing these fractionally quantized plateaus. So, this is the hierarchy of energy levels. So, uh, this can be in principle can be done for a few particles uh, invoking a degenerate perturbation theory, but that is a very cumbersome problem and a numerical problem which is uh, quite uh, you know heavy weight uh, numerics uh, need to be done there. So, instead of that uh, one could actually write down the, the wave function. Uh, purely from intuition and in order to do that we have just initially have looked at uh, these um, two particle problem and these two particle problem uh, you know they are interacting via a coulomb like potential or two particle central potential to be you know in general uh, let us call them a central potential. And um, this is the wave function that can be written this uh, is the wave function that one can write. Uh, for the uh, for the two particles and so on where z is the uh, you know the coordinate uh, the just for you know one uh, particle. So, this is the wave function and when you sort of go to two particle one can write down in terms of these uh, z 1 and z 2 and z 1 minus z 2 which are called as the relative and the total uh, coordinates uh, and capital M being the total angular momentum and the M being the relative angular momentum. And then it is uh, there is a Gaussian term which is uh, will have to be there that is ubiquitous in this case. How do we go to a many particle problem? This uh, factor that you see here is written down in fact, nothing has been solved, but they are just written down from intuition that is what Laughlin did. And Laughlin wrote down this wave function with uh, this as the Jastrow factor uh, which is uh, has certain properties and these properties are these 1, 2, 3 are the properties that f of z i should obey. And from there uh, to uh, you know in keeping with all these properties one can write down this Jastrow factor as z i minus z j whole to the power m. It has a nice property that if z i equal to z j then it is a mth times 0 you know. So, it is the Pauli exclusion principle is really uh, is obeyed here and also the, the anti-symmetric property of the wave function and so on. And then uh, we had gone ahead and shown that uh, there are these wave functions actually have the right you know filling which is what we wanted is nu equal to 1 over m which we had written down earlier. Okay. There are many books and texts that are important this article by David Tong. Uh, which is one of the very important texts in this particular case. Uh, there are many others I mean uh, uh, Tony Leggett has uh, nice reviews on this, uh, Daniel Arrowverse and many others ok. I mean there are a number of very good um, reviews written on this fractional quantum Hall effect. Um, J K Jain has books uh, I believe more than one book he has on the fractional quantum Hall effect. Um, and uh, part of his work we will be talking about uh, towards the end. So, uh, we uh, stop uh, now with this understanding of the Laughlin states which did not have to be you know worked out 
However, they are written down and these the power of this is that once you do uh, numerics uh, and calculate the energy with you know the potential term that is a Coulomb interaction term and you want to understand that how good your Laughlin states are uh, then you actually do a variational calculation of the energy for those uh, you know few electrons that you have and you see that these Laughlin states have uh, uh, more than 99 percent overlap which means they are almost exact uh, with the exact results numerically obtained. Mm -hmm.